everybody. Welcome back to the Routine Podcast. Gymnastics Conversations. I'm Chelsea. I'm Chelsea's mom, Diana. And we're back for episode 86. Do you remember that episode that we did where we flipped it, where I did the hey everybody and you did it? It (laughs) It was like real time dyslexia. (laughs) And it didn't work out too well. So we've never done it again. No. We've learned that lesson. We know our roles. That's right. (laughs) I'm Chelsea's mom, Diana. And I am Chelsea. (laughs) Welcome back. I feel like this is kind of a sad episode. Well, it's not sad. Actually, this is a really good episode. But it's sad because it's over for now. We are actually concluding this season. The first part of this season. That's right. Well, the season of competitive season. The regular season. season. Right, the regular competitive (laughs) season we're finishing. Yeah. But not the end of the podcast season. No. So after today's episode, we'll take... A month or so, little break, and then we'll be back with some really good summer series episodes. We've gotten some great ideas in terms of what we should do and who we should interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Chelsea and I are supposed to have our, I'm putting this in air quote, business meeting today. I, I have to like get myself ready <laughs> emotionally before mom and I have any sort of business <laughs> meeting because mom has... Some great ideas that she always brings I'm to the table. I'm an ideas person. But the thing is, she's never really realistic. Like, she has the idea first, yes. and then she figures out how to realistically do it. It's the where, story of my life, Chelsea. And where I'm the opposite. I think about the reality of things, and then I'm like, oh, that would be a great idea. So, right. Some would say that we clash, but I think it actually... We balance each other out. I think we do. I think the key that we've learned over the years that we've done this is we don't take each other too seriously. Mm-mm. And that you know that my idea is just that. It's an idea. And I know that you're not really getting my idea, but give you time. Yeah. That's what I was about to say. Give me like, let me sleep on it. And yeah. then I'll come back and like... Hey, so I was thinking, you know, maybe this could work. And then we come in the middle. Yeah. So hopefully that happens. Any updates for the people? Um, The flower. It's good flower? Oh, and it's really good flower, right? We were a little scared because it's, again, it's a 25-pound bag, and it says on it, plain hotel and restaurant flower. Let me just pause. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, reference last week's episode <laughs> we have a whole story yeah, about the whole flower. Story about it. Yeah. but so the bag says that but then in big writing at the bottom it says wheat flour and mom read that out loud and like she almost started crying on the spot <laughs> i'm like i have 25 pounds of wheat flour <laughs> she's no. freaking out she's like no it can't be wheat no what am i supposed to do with wheat i'm like mom just open the like, bag just open the bag open the bag i'm like but chelsea how can it say plain flour here and wheat flour there and, and what Chelsea's did i say like, mom just open the bag <laughs> just open the she's bag. she's acting like if she if she opens it like she can't return it. it's like mom you can't return it anyways <laughs> like it's stuck no matter what <laughs> and this is like chelsea in our lives it's so so chelsea right so me Chelsea goes, gets the scissors, and she opens the bag of flowers. <laughs> she literally is just like, what, what, what? And I'm just like, Mom, chill out, please. Uh, open the bag. <laughs> you couldn't get from point A to point B. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's, like, so you, too. And it's so you. It's like, calm it down. Just open the bag. And... It was regular flour. <laughs> so there was no need to freak out. No, and it was beautiful, light and fluffy, plain white flour. Yeah. So we, what, how many individual bags did we end up? I think we ended up with eight vacuum sealed bags. And uh, it's funny because now I have people. <laughs> Mom's the flour <laughs> plug. Texting me. Hey, can I come and get some flour? <laughs> yeah. Hey. I'm like, sure. Absolutely. I have lots of it. <laughs> well, and then my business daughter, Chelsea, says, you should sell this. <laughs> That's what Amazon's doing. They're marking it up and selling it to people. No, I am giving away bags of flour. Okay. Well, 
I feel like that's a nice end to the story. I think we shouldn't talk about it ever again. I know. No more flower. No more flower stories. No more flower. But if you guys need flower, you know where to hit us up at. Although I do think we did get one message about the flower. Yes. From our good friend, Melissa. And she says, hi, Chelsea and Diana. Hope all is well as we go through another week at home. I really enjoyed this episode hearing about Brown's gymnastics program and Jackie Court. How inspiring that she stood up for the program that now exists today. I was laughing at your 25 pound flower delivery, quarantine shopping at its best. For summer series, I'd love to hear from Dr. Dave Tilley. He always shares great information. Also, maybe a series on graduated seniors and what they're up to a year later. I think hearing from Alicia Bourne would be interesting. Hope you continue to stay safe, Melissa. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks, Melissa. It's funny you bring up Alicia Bourne because we kind of did like a mini interview, a mini impromptu interview during the virtual Flippin' 5K. Maybe we can add that short little interview on our member site. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, so people can listen to what Alicia's doing. She's still in Florida, and she is actually training, but not for gymnastics. Yeah, it was very interesting. Yeah. So let's include that on our member site this week. I think that's a great idea. And we still want to find more ideas on what you want us to talk about during the summer series. So far, what we've heard is a mother-daughter episode, uh, the seniors where you Are They Now episode that Melissa just talked about, Chelsea Memo interviewing Chelsea. Uh, And then I want to add, Chelsea, I'd love to do something on the NCAA's new ruling that came out this week. Mm -hmm. I think that would be interesting just to talk about NCAA. I mean, we think about it as it relates to football and basketball players and how much money they can make and all that. But it also affects gymnastics as well. So I'd love to do something with the NCAA and their new ruling. It's funny you bring that up because I've actually added that to our news you can use Mm. section. (laughs) You could have just just started talking about the ruling. I know, but like... You didn't even have to do like the topic header. You could have just said, and this is what the new ruling is. At this point, though, I'm just pulling your leg. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So this past week, the NCAA is now allowing athletes to be paid. So that could be through social media um, or business and personal appearances. That is so cool. I mean, Starting January I, 2021. So I mean, I think it's cool. I mean, I guess that's probably what we should talk about in our series is whether people do think that's good or not. Because I think especially with gymnastics and it being a sport that doesn't bring as much revenue. Um, so I think it would be interesting to hear both sides of the story. Yeah, I think so, too. I'm not going to say news you can use, but I'm going to say there's another article that came out this week that's in the news. But we're in our news you can use (laughs) segment of the podcast. (laughs) And that is that we have a new head coach announcement. Yay! So Randy Lane was officially announced as the inaugural head coach at Long Island University. What fun, right? Being a new head coach at a new school where you get to pick new gymnasts, new assistant coaches, new equipment. Determine the culture for the program. Yeah. So for our interviews today, we actually got the chance to talk to Randy. In addition to Randy, we also talked to the director of athletics for LIU, Dr. Bill Martinov. Yeah, and it's funny because as we said in last week's episode, which was before the university announced Randy's position, is that we have this interview with Dr. Martinov. And then a couple days later, they announced that Randy was the head coach. And we were like, oh, shoot. Well, now we got to talk to Randy. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Because part of Bill's interview, you'll hear he shares with us and I'm on the hunt for a head coach. Mm -hmm. So, of course, that was all before the announcement. That's old news. (laughs) Yeah, but it also makes the routine podcast kind of be in the moment as decisions are being made, Yeah, which is pretty cool. And shout out to Coach McCharles. He actually planted that seed in our mind. As soon as the announcement came, he was like, you guys should interview Randy. So that's what we did. Yep. Thank you, Coach McCharles. (laughs) We've missed talking to you this season. I know. Hope you're doing well. I know that's separate than what we're talking about right now, but we always have to do a shout out to Coach Charles. So let's start with Dr. Martinov's interview. 
So we are excited today. We are joined with Bill Martinov. Bill is with Long Island University. He's got a couple of uh, jobs, a couple of hats. He's director of athletics, but he's also chief of alumni and employer engagement. Hi, Bill. Hey, good morning. Good to be with uh, both of you today. Good morning. How are you? Uh, we're doing well under the circumstances. Uh, you know, everybody's kind of dealing with this new normal, but uh, we're pushing ahead. Sure. You know, you got a radio voice. Do people tell you that? Uh, they, they haven't, but uh, keep talking to me. Maybe I should get a second career going here. Chelsea might have you as the co-host instead of me. Let's not take anything away from you. Well, I can tell you the pay is not very good. Well, as long as we have fun, that's all that matters. Oh, we definitely do that. Uh, so again, thank you for joining us today. Chelsea, I guess it's probably a month or so ago, sent me this information about you all starting a new women's collegiate gymnastics program. How exciting. It is. I tell you, uh, as a, a former, and I stress former gymnast uh, back in high school, it's exciting to be a part of it, not only personally, but for the university to be able to to add another Olympic sport, one that particularly for the women's side is growing and, and doing so much out there that we're excited just to be a part of it. Sure. So we're going to ask you about how this whole idea evolved. But first, I think it's important for you to get the chance to share Talk to us about Long Island University. What is it that you want our listeners to know? Well, Long Island University is a very special place. Uh, we are, have been on the island, Brooklyn, uh, Long Island, and the Westchester counties since about the late 1920s. And uh, what's interesting about us is that we've been a private institution since the late 20s and have grown substantially from the 50s and even up until this uh, decade where as a university striving to be a national teaching and research institution we've done many great things that most people wouldn't even think about whether it's uh, the person who brought pokemon from overseas to the United States as one of our alums no yeah alcon is an alum who actually helped bring uh, underwater cable from the United States to Europe. I think what's important, though, is is to know that also through these years, we've had a couple different athletic departments coexist. And that really kind of brings us to this opportunity of adding gymnastics is that in the late 20s, we've always had an athletic department in Brooklyn. That was where the original campus started and uh, had some great success over the decades, particularly with basketball. But in the 50s, we created a campus out on Long Island at the, the old, uh, if you're familiar with Post Serial, mm -hmm. W. Post Estate became our, our second major campus out on Long Island. And those two campuses had athletic departments. And um, Post, most recently, was a Division II program. And so we had Brooklyn Division I, Post Division II. And just about a year and a half ago, we announced that we'd become one athletic department. And that took place this fall of 19. So we, we unified the two athletic departments. And when we did that, what it did was it allowed us be, to become one recognizable national brand as an athletic department. And as we do that, we wanted to grow. And part of our growth plan was to add some sports. And one of them, obviously, as we're talking about, is women's gymnastics program that we feel is just a great fit for us, not only locally, but uh, nationally. And we are excited like the gymnastics world, it's it's good to hear that everybody's excited about another program. Well, and it's so good in terms of contrasting information that we hear where schools are reducing their athletic programs and especially focused on women's programs. So to hear the reverse is really exciting for us. Talk about a little bit, if you can, the decision making in terms of what the program would be like equipment needs, infrastructure needs? What are some of the things that you guys are going through to get the program up and running? Sure. That's a great question. We've had some great support from the Collegiate Gymnastics Growth Initiative who visited with me back in, I think, late February. And they were very helpful in allowing us to identify a training facility close to campus, which proximity is important. And also the capacity of that facility is important, right? And then, you know, thinking about how it fits into our own Division One athletic program is important, too, you know, in terms of where we're going. And we just felt it was the right time and the right fit. Now, as I say that, albeit we're going through a challenging time as a country right now. And so we want to make sure we're, we're clear that we're going to follow through and see it through and, and do the best we can, understanding that we, we started the development of this program 
before this big challenge. And so we, we realize it may be a little bit of a hindrance, but we're going to get the right people on board. We're going to keep talking about the great things that LIU can do for our prospective student athletes and, and allow people to see it as a true opportunity for an exceptional student athlete who wants to compete and get a great education. And it sounds like, uh, based on how you said that, there may be some, we won't call it delays, but everything's being looked at in terms of how it actually gets implemented once we get on the other side of the pandemic. Is that what I understood? Well, I just think in general, there's so much uncertainty with even our current sports. So that tells us that anything we do, we have to be agile and flexible and understanding and forward thinking in terms of challenges that may or may not come our way. Uh, I think the reality is, is that there's high school students that are probably still trying to figure out what they're doing next year. I'll tell you right now, we've had a great response from high school athletes, uh, some college kids thinking about transferring. So we've had a great interest. I think that in and of itself tells us we've gone in the right direction. It's how you deal with some potential challenges that we may not see coming. And so we're full steam ahead. It's just being cognizant of the fact that there may be things that could change the direction a little bit, but we're just preparing for what might come our way. We're not delaying. And in terms of interest, currently you haven't announced a head coach. I'm sure you're in the process of that. Can you talk to us a little bit about the selection process? Sure. You know, we as we've unified this Division One program, we've tried to set a bar for ourselves if we're truly going to be competitive in our conferences that we're in and truly want to be at, at a national level is that uh, we feel that finding coaches and staff that have been there before, that have seen a national championship, that have either coached or participated as a national champion, is instrumental in being part of the ingredients of that that next coach. And also being able to have the experience of being at a power five level, you know, somebody that is, is year in and year out been a part of that high level of competition is helpful as well. Now, being in this business for a number of years, that doesn't guarantee you everything, right? Sometimes the best coach is somebody you don't necessarily see on a radar because that's what you're staring at. But we do want to make sure that we can start off on the right foot for having people that know what it looks like to win. And then particularly if you feel like you can work with that person and that they are going to provide the experience for student athletes, it's ultra important to me and our, our department is that we want somebody who's going to be positive great teacher, just going to make an overall experience that's going to help retain our students, help them graduate. And so it can't be, I hate to use the term, but it can't be win at all cost. That just, that just doesn't work for our program. I want people that are coaches and staff that want to want to be there. I don't want to beg them. I don't want to try to convince them this is the right place for them. It's got to come from them. And if they want to be here and part of the program and expectations that we have, then we can do great things and we'll do it for a long time. I don't want somebody to come in for one year, two years and move on. I, we want to get the right person from the get-go. You know, our athletic programs provide experiences to our student athletes that just the average young person, unfortunately, doesn't get to experience. And so I want our student athletes to go away saying this is the best four years of their life, at least when they graduate. Hopefully they have great four years in, in the future, but whether it's gymnastics or any other sports, it's a rare experience. And I'll ask you this question. So what percentage of 18 to 22-year-olds do you think are college athletes at any one given moment? Mm. I would say below 5%. It's less than half of 1%. Oh, my gosh. That means that 99.5% of an 18 to 22-year-old's peers are not a college athlete. So that tells you right off the bat that that's an exceptional exclusive group of young people mm -hmm. that have an experience that the other 99.5% aren't able to experience, unfortunately. So you remind your, your student athletes how lucky they are. And when we remind them of that, we have to also be able to reciprocate a great experience. It's exciting. You know, it's not everybody gets to do this. And I think when we have the rare fortune to be able to do it, we have to do it the best we can. Tell us, LIU, what's the mascot? Uh, we're the Sharks. So as we unified the two athletic departments, very interesting. Private institution, we had two different we had two different athletic departments. So we felt it was important as we unified that we represent each campus in a color. And so we're kind of a light blue and yellow gold. 
what was, you know, the challenge, if you will, or, or I guess not a challenge, but, you know, a little bit more sensitive to, was what would our mascot be? Do, how do you pick one without, you know, offending the other set of alumni, right? And, and not that this went smoothly because we have passionate alums, right? People remember their experience. So they're passionate about their time on campus. So now we're just, you know, we're going to be able to, to continue to move forward as LIU, one LIU and, and the Sharks. And, and I think that's helpful to our university uh, from a number of ways. Absolutely. All right. So if I want to become an LIU Shark <laughs> or I just want more information because I want to be a fan, what should I do? Well, those are a few different answers here, I think. One is you go to our LIU Athletics website. You can get a lot of information just about athletics. Uh, you can also actually just go to LIU.edu, get a lot of information about our university, our academic programs, the things that we do uh, culturally and socially on campus. You know, in terms of being a prospective student athlete, both the university uh, website and the athletics We'll show you who we are, and uh, we have a lot to celebrate. We're a lot to be proud of, and at the same time, we're excited about the future, and gymnastics is part of that future. You know, if you look at where we're located, Long Island, there's not a college program on the island, and we know that there's a lot of young gymnasts that are training to be national champions, and uh, we like the thought of being really the one, the one show in town, if you will. And at the same time, from a national perspective, you know, we get – student athletes from all over the country, all over the world. So not only are we thinking locally, we're going to have some great success, but internationally we will as well. We do want student athletes, so they have to be very good in the classroom. And of course, we want them to be competitive at the highest level. So we want it all. We want the best students who are the best gymnasts. And that's the expectation that we're setting. So if somebody wants to be a true winner, uh, they'll come to LIU and they'll join our gymnastics team or any other team for that matter if they if they want to be a true winner. I, I'm pausing because I want to be part of the team. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea, who's graduated, right? <laughs> you got eligibility. We can tra- you can transfer in. <laughs> Oh, Bill, this has been the best interview. Uh, hopefully we can talk to you again, like let's say fall, winter, towards the end of this year and just kind of see how things are going. It's just so exciting to be part of, because I do feel like we're part of it now, part of your team success and part of this building of this incredible program. Yeah, that'd be great. Anytime. You know, we're, we've got a couple milestones that are big right now for us, hiring a coach and announcing that, recruiting our team. Uh, we've, we've got just so many interested young people to join the program. And then, you know, next year's our inaugural season. You know, we're in the Eagle Conference, which has a great representation along the East Coast. And uh, it's going to be exciting, you know. So I think we've got a few opportunities to reconnect and talk about where we are with the program. And love to share those those moments with you. Oh, we would love it. And absolutely any time. And uh Go Sharks. Well, that's right. Well, we say fins up, go Sharks. <laughs> oh. Is this kind of like Roll Tide? As a Notre Dame guy, we respect Alabama, but we don't care about the Roll Tide. <laughs> <laughs> Alabama, a great program they, whenever we played them and, you know, just a great rivalry. But yeah, we're excited about the, the Sharks and uh, we'd love to reconnect as, whenever we can. That'd be, that'd be fantastic. It's going to be a great journey. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I agree. Fins up. Go Sharks. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Look at us, Bill. We're good. We're teachable. Let me tell you, we're teachable. One more time. You can't see me, but I'm going to point to the left, and it's going to be Diana, and then it's going to be Chelsea, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you're, you're going to point to the left and then point to the right as we do this? Yes, because one of you is going to say fins up. The other one's going to say go Sharks. Oh, gotcha. And you do the movement at the same time, huh? Right. You can't see it, but okay, ready? One, two, three. Fins up. Go Sharks. Awesome. Yay! <laughs> oh bill this has been so much fun today we're so excited yeah it is and i'm excited I, i'm i'm glad that we had this chance to to talk because it's uh it just is another opportunity to remind her, you know remind me and ourselves that this is how exciting it is and when you're working at home and in this whole isolation thing you you lose sight of the, the fact that there's these great opportunities so I, I thank you for spending time with me and being able to share this great story Best of luck to you and best of luck to the team. And we'll talk to you again, let's say fall, winter. Sounds great. So like we said, we talked to Bill before the Randy announcement. And so we were able to track down Randy days after 
the official announcement to talk to him about how he feels about being a part of this inaugural gymnastics program. Hi, Randy. Hi, how are you both? We're doing fabulous. How are you? I am. I'm pretty darn good right now. <laughs> a, a little overwhelmed, but on cloud nine at the same time. So it's all good. All right. So we have to say congratulations. congratulations. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I'm so excited for this journey and this adventure. And never in my wildest dreams did I think that this would happen. And, you know, my main focus, as both of you know, is to grow our sport and to create opportunities for young women. So when I went in and made the presentation at LIU, it, it never crossed my mind that I would even, one, be considered to be the head coach, and two, that I would end up taking it. So I'm very uh, honored that they have chosen me as the, the first head coach for gymnastics there. I'm looking forward to it. And I can't wait because I the mascot, the sharks, I just love this. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so awesome. <laughs> I'm already choreographing in my mind, you know, shark fins and things like that. In Florida, so. Yeah, well, once you get those fins, send us a couple so we can okay. wave them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All the novelty items are going to be really, really fun to sell at meets and things like that. So Yeah, well, send us your first bobblehead. How about that? Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kenny, we start at the beginning. Uh, obviously, this started as part of your work with the Collegiate Growth Initiative, right? Correct. That's that's how it all began. And you know, my passion for growing opportunities for young women in our sport and just growing our sport in general is, is vitally important. And so I'm already like looking forward to the future of how I can help as a new head coach to make other athletic directors realize they can do this. I've already been in uh, conversations with the committee that I ch co-chair with uh, Mike Rowe from Michigan State and Jenny Hansen from Minnesota. And I said, okay, I'm going to need your help a little bit more this year. I'm not going to be able to do as much as I have been doing, but my passion is still there. And, and um, you know, this past year was, was such a great year for us to not only get Long Island University to add gymnastics, but just in general, with everything going on in the world, we have had some highlights. And and I think that's what it's all about for the future is to make other athletic directors and administrators and presidents of universities understand that this is a great sport and you should have it. And for those who aren't familiar with the growth initiative, can you just give a little bit of background of exactly what the initiative is? Yeah. So the Collegiate Gymnastics Growth Initiative is a committee within the Women's Collegiate Gymnastics Association um, and what our main focus and goal is to create opportunities, to um, provide the resources that are needed for any university that is considering adding our sport and making it a permanent part of their athletic department. We have events that we actually run and, and we just did the Flippin' 5K, which you all were a part of <laughs> yes. in some way, which was great. Sure. And we had over 7,000 people that signed up for that this year. So that that shows the love for our sport. And I think it was a great day of the gymnastics community coming together. Um, beyond the events that we are doing and that we're hopefully going to do in the future, you know, our main focus is the presentation side, putting together PowerPoint presentations to go into universities and show them the great aspects of our sport from graduation success rate to the APR to just getting athletic directors and administrators to understand that our women that take part in our sport give back to the community and are a great asset to the community within the universities. We're in this together to create opportunities for all future gymnasts. And it's uh, funny when you when we talk to Bill, his sharing with us in terms of the support that he received from the growth initiative and helping to make that decision and really helping to make that decision easier for him just because of the information that the initiative shared. He knew that he loved gymnastics and I think he's going to be one of the most valuable assets for our committee moving forward because he's doing it. He's implementing gymnastics because he believes in what we can provide. He was awesome. You know, I, we, we started doing the presentation and we had two different types of presentations, which we, you know, we were always growing ourselves and learning how to present to people. And we have our, like to call it our generic presentation that shows all the good things about us, such as grade point average and academic excellence that our, our gymnasts have. And, 
And he, we got about 20 minutes into the presentation. He, he stopped me. He goes, Randy, uh, you know, I know all about this. You guys have already <laughs> talked about this. We don't, he goes, we're adding gymnastics. And at that <laughs> point, I was just like, oh my gosh, I was dying inside. You know, I was, I was jumping up and down. And he goes, I just want you to help us figure out the logistics of how we can launch and get a program going. You know, we did that and it's evolved into what it has become now. And, you know, it's it's one step at a time. And, and they have been very concrete with their steps. Sure. So now let's talk about that. We talked about the initiative. We talked about Bill. But now we have to talk about you as the head coach. <laughs> How are you feeling about this? You know, it, it, um, it has been overwhelming and exciting. And I'm so honored to... Uh, to be a part of it. And, you know, I, I'm a real um, people person. So for me not to be there yet, I'm still in California and I, I will be here for like the next couple of months, probably it's, it's kind of hard. You know, I don't have anything that says LIU sharks on it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, you know, I spoke to a recruit. I did a zoom call yesterday and her dad, he had printed out some things and put it on his hat and put it on his shirt. And I just, I thought that was awesome. I'm like, I'm like I don't even have that yet, but it's so cool. So I think, you know, a lot of people have um, reached out to me with well wishes and, and congratulations. And I, I am very honored to be able to be a part of something special and new. And, and I don't like to refer to it as mine. I refer to it as ours because it truly is ours to kind of be proud of. And I think the gymnastics community needs to be proud of the fact that we we're all in this and we've all started a gymnastics program and I only want more to start, you know, because of it. But as I said, I've been overwhelmed a bit, but I definitely have a great list of coach candidates for my assistant coaching positions. I have a great list of young women to uh, choose from for the inaugural team. And then I'm working on the schedule after that. So I, I, my, my main focus for this month of May is to, to get, a staff in place and to get a team ready for this fall to feel like a family of sharks, a family of sharks. So. <laughs> That's got to be like, a, not a school of sharks. I yeah, what. I know. We've got to figure out what that is. I, I do. I, it's, it's very funny because somebody will say, you know what, we can make shark cookies for you. I'm like, why? And they're like, we own a cookie company. And I'm like, great. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you know, it, it, there's going to be a lot of bumps in the road. And, and I know that, you know, when starting something new, and this is what I've told every person that I've spoken to that is considering to be a, an assistant coach and, and those gymnasts, I'm like, we're going to figure this out together. And we just have to take a deep breath and just go, okay, it's, it's going to be okay. And when you look at the, the recruiting that you'll be doing, how many gymnasts will you be looking for? I, I don't have a set number. I think, you know, ideally I would like to have between 15 to 18 in this initial class and then build from there. I know that when Arkansas added, they primarily had just freshmen that they had the first year. And I, I really don't think that's a great idea. Um, just because of leadership abilities. And, sure. and so there have been a number of transfers that have reached out and women who have graduated with their undergrad and have um, reached out about going to grad school because they have el eligibility remaining. So I'm looking at the complete picture and, and how all of the pieces of the puzzle fit together, because I think it's going to be important to have young women who have been there maybe at a, you know, a different institution that they have learned from and that they can help those younger freshmen that are going to be the majority of the team. So I'm looking at it um, from all aspects of how we can come together to be the, not only the best gymnastics team, but the best group of people that could lead the way and, and start a culture of greatness at a new institution. So I'm excited about that part. Yeah, the new LIU family. Yes. It's a pretty daunting task. Thank goodness I was helping with things as we were moving forward because, you know, there have been over 80 young women who have shown an interest that are wow. graduating just this year. So it makes me realize as the chair of our committee that there are so many young women out there that don't get opportunities that want to stay in the sport. And uh, I think that that's that's really great to know those young women. I've sent an email to every single one of them and they're slowly reaching back out to me. And 
Uh, I've identified a, a, a group of about 22 or five that I feel would be great contributors in the gymnastics area. And now I'm trying to get to know them a little bit more to see where they are and what their thoughts are on being a, a part of the first team. So this month of May is, is the time that I'm really going to take to you know, what else do I have to do? Get on Zoom calls. That's what we're all doing all the time. <laughs> That's you know? right. That's right. So I'm going to get on lots of Zoom calls. I've already been on a few and um, I've created some excitement from uh, from some of these young women and, and I hope to continue to create excitement. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because my last question for you is going to be, what are you most excited about? But also, what gives you the most kind of trepidation? I, I think the the thing that I'm most excited about is all the firsts. You know, I, I think the, the first day that, of practice that we all come together as the first team, um, the first competition that we're all together and coming together as, as one, the first uh, record, you know, the first meet, we're going to have all records. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's the first, you know, and I, I think having a team record and, you know, individual records, that, that is, is awesome. I think the trepidations that I have are, you know, am I going to do everything right? And I haven't let that enter my brain yet until just right now, because as I said before, I, I know there are going to be some bumps in the road and I expect that that's, that's human nature of our sport. And just in general, you know, as a, as a head coach, I think the responsibilities of not only your, your athletes, but your staff and everybody around you is is uh, overwhelming to an extent as well. But I think that's why I want to surround myself with great people that I not only can trust, but they will have my back as well. So I think that's the only trepidation that I have. Um, I'm going into this with a smile on my face and, and being the vigilant idea man uh, to kind of move things forward. You know, I'm, I'm so positive and I have such positive energy that, that I hope that passion and that positivity can rub off and, on everyone around me at Long Island University. Well, it's rubbed off on us, Randy. <laughs> oh, I love it. Great. Anytime. <laughs> well, we wish you the best of luck. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Fins up. Go Sharks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got to say with passion, too. So That goes back to that energy, right? <laughs> so I, I, I posted something on social media saying yesterday I was out shark hunting. You know, it's, it's shark <laughs> hunting season. So um, I'm very excited and and very excited for the future. And I, you know, I've already talked to a couple of different people about doing things uh, with us. So I hope that you all will come to a meet and maybe do a live broadcast from Ooh. us. At some point. Yes, yeah. as long as it's not live video, we're there. <laughs> we are there. That sounds great. I love it. You know, we'll, we'll definitely be there. You know, it's New York's not that far from Maryland, so we I most know. definitely will be there, Randy, and watch all of your team's success. Yes. We're so great. happy for you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you both. Okay, all the Thank best. You. All right, take care. Uh huh. Bye. Bye now. Best of luck to the LIU Sharks. It is really exciting, especially for us, because the EAGL conference is the Mid-Atlantic. So we are smack dab in the middle of the Mid-Atlantic. I think it's going to be fun to watch Randy as he builds this new program with, you know, the new assistant coaches, with 15 gymnasts from across the country. And like he said, not just picking 15 new freshmen, but picking women of all different ages, different classes, different levels of experience. I think that just makes for a holistic view of the team. Mm -hmm. And it actually makes me think about Lindenwood when they started. The majority of the first year team was new freshmen, but they had like two or three gymnasts who transferred from other universities. And you could see that they were those leaders of the team, so. They were the rocks. Yeah. 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 So it'd be fun. One of my favorite things that Randy said was that it's really our team. He doesn't consider it his team because gym fans have helped bring this program to life because of all of the support that we've given women's college gymnastics over the years. It's really true. It just feels like a team where all the stars are aligning together mm -hmm. from the work of the 
collegiate growth initiative to Randy being the head coach to gymnasts transferring from other schools. ESPN airing gymnastics more and more year after year, which is also helping the sport grow because it has more eyes on it. It's all of these, again, stars just coming together, which in turn brings a new program. And there's one more star, Chelsea. The routine podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about it. Just us. being hours away <laughs> from New York and from Long Island. This could be our new home team. It could be. But we're unbiased, remember? We, we can't are. We have favorites. Remember this year, we didn't have any favorite teams. We were just... We did well this year with no favorites. Yeah. Now, we didn't go to nationals, right? I don't know what would have happened <laughs> yeah. at nationals. But up until that moment the season ended, yeah. we were very much unbiased. I think so, too. But I think we can have a little nudge towards LIU and the Sharks. It will always have a special place in our heart. We're already doing, like, fins up, go Sharks. <laughs> we're already asking for shirts and bobbleheads. <laughs> and it hasn't even started yet. Oh, that's funny. Before you leave us, we want you to remember that College Gym News is your one-stop shop for all things college gymnastics. For event coverage, leotard rankings, in-depth features, fantasy gymnastics resources, and more, visit collegegymnews.com. And if you're interested in supporting CGN's expanding coverage, visit collegegymnews.com slash donate. College Gym News, all the college gymnastics news you want. All in one place. It's been fun, daughter. It has. I'm looking for a little break, though. Me too. I think it was 23 weeks straight from November to now. We yeah, didn't but miss one week. High five, mom. High five in the <laughs> air. But I also look at the preseason work that we did. Mm. The new website. Oh, yeah. Having new members to the routine podcast. All the work that we did, the new voicemail feature, mm. you know, I just think it's been a really good season for us. We've come a long way, daughter. I think so, too. Which is why it's time for a business meeting. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say, which is why it's time for a break. <laughs> <laughs> that, too. Because I was nodding my head to that, too. <laughs> And speaking of voicemails, if you all, again, have any ideas or any specific things you really want us to cover during the summer series, um, make sure you reach out to us. You can tweet us. Our Twitter is at Routine Podcast. You can email us at info at the routine podcast.com, or you can leave us a voicemail on our website, the routine podcast.com. And you leave us a voicemail by going to the episode that you're most interested in. You'll see at the very top a microphone. You click that microphone that takes you to our voicemail section and you leave us a voicemail. And if you liked any of our episodes these past 23 plus weeks, be sure to give us five stars on the Apple Podcast app. It really helps us out. And you can still support us. Be sure to become a member. And you do that by going to the Support Us page. There are three levels of support. You can click any of those levels of support and be a member of the Routine Podcast. Hopefully by the time we come back for our summer series, we're all out of quarantine, living our best life. We're all healthy and safe. And having a different appreciation for life in general. So we hope you all stay safe and talk to you during our summer series. Bye. Bye. Bye.